So after 10 years, the Bleach anime is finally coming back. Thing is, I ended up reading the Thousand Year Blood War arc, and honestly, I think some changes need to be made for the anime. Even though I tend to watch anime more than reading manga, I decided to read the Thousand Year Blood War arc since at the time, there was really no news about the Bleach anime coming back, and the Thousand Year Blood War arc was still ongoing. Now don't get me wrong, the Thousand Year Blood War arc was a pretty damn good arc, but it still had its issues. So while talking about some of those issues, I'm going to try to be as vague as possible. So be wary of that. So the first thing I was actually going to talk about was going to be the battles, but apparently Kubo has stated that the battles will be extended. So we don't have to worry about that. So instead I'm going to be talking about Chad and Orihime because sadly they really didn't do that much with this arc. You would think that since it's the final arc that Chad and Orihime would have a decently sized role, but that ends up not being the case. And honestly, I was kind of expecting them to have a decently sized role, especially for the fact that they got sidelined in the last two arcs. So like with Orihime, you know, she tries to sacrifice herself to Okiora, and you think she's about to pop off and do something crazy, maybe even something game changer, but that ends up not happening and she kind of gets sidelined and not really doing anything. Same thing goes for Chad during the Full Ringer arc. You know, he was kind of MIA in the beginning of the arc, and then it turns out that he was training with the Full Bringers, and then so you're thinking, okay, maybe he might end up having a pretty big role in this arc since he was training with them, you know, before they really got revealed. Like to me, I thought Chad was kind of going to be fighting alongside Ichigo going against Tsukushima or even Ginjo once like his true nature came out and that ended up not happening. And pretty much Chad kind of got sidelined again in this arc. So I was hoping that Chad and Orihime would at least get redeemed in this arc. You know, I'm not talking about taking on the final villain or anything. I'm talking about giving them a decently sized role since the past two arcs, they pretty much got sidelined. Like Chad and Orihime, they could just be, you know, good support or backup for Ichigo or just another Soul Reaper. Maybe like having Chad be some kind of like backup support to Shunsui, you know, I think that'd be a really nice callback to like, you know, the Saving Rukia arc when Shunsui and Chad ended up fighting against each other. So having them be partners or like, you know, Chad being a backup to Shunsui, I thought that would have been really cool to see. And then you could have like someone like Orihime being a really good backup and support for Ichigo since that's what she tends to do, you know, or if they don't want to end up doing that, at least having her be a good backup support for another Soul Reaper, you know, like I said, it could either be Ichigo or it could be Rukia, you know, something along those lines, maybe even Renji. The next issue I had with this arc was Squad Zero. Yes, Squad Zero does make an appearance and it was pretty damn cool. Honestly, it was pretty hype when they make an appearance. But then they just kind of really don't do so much, in my opinion. With such an important squad like Squad Zero, they needed to do a lot more. And honestly, they just really didn't do so much for the arc, which sucks because these guys were hyped up quite a bit. The last time we see Squad Zero, I'm honestly perfectly fine if they keep the outcome the same that they did in the manga. I would be perfectly fine with that. Just give them a little bit more because, because they were so hyped up, it was just kind of disappointing what like after they made their appearance and everything it was just there was just not a lot with squad zero which was pretty disappointing so this next part i'm going to talk about it is going to be a little bit of a spoiler so you know skip to whatever time i put right here and you know just so you can avoid the spoiler so one of the biggest things i really didn't like about this arc too much was ichigo's new bankai yep he gets another new bankai but it turns out that this Bankai is actually his true Bankai. And honestly, this Bankai had a lot of potential to be amazingly powerful because once Yuha used his powers and saw what his true Bankai can actually do, Yuha realized that he needed to destroy it. And once he does, we don't really know what Ichigo's true Bankai can really do. So yeah, just not knowing what Ichigo's true Bankai could really do after it was hyped up so much, in my opinion, it was kind of hyped up so much that like, oh, this was going to be something that Yuha, that was going to defeat Yuha and everything. But once he saw what it can do, once Yuha saw what it can do, he ended up kind of just destroying it. And we are left in the dust and like not knowing what Ichigo's true Bankai could really do, except for the fact that it was extremely powerful and something that was able to take down Yuha right then and there. Obviously, this is a war arc, so a lot of battles are happening at the same time. The thing is, once some of those battles end, we don't know the outcome of some of the characters, which annoyed me quite a bit. Like, even in the end of the, like, the final chapter, 
there is no mention of some of these characters, whether or not they ended up surviving or not. So honestly, I think the anime needs to pretty much like, you know, tell us the outcome with some of the characters that we don't know what happened to them after the war, since in the manga, we have no idea unless you read the light novels, which I actually didn't. The last thing I really didn't like too much about this arc was that Ichigo and Uryu's dads don't give them a heart to heart right before the final battle starts. You know, so you have like Ichigo's dad and Uryu's dad show up right before the final battle happens. And, you know, they're kind of like talking to, you know, Ichigo and Uryu. But yeah, they're pretty much talking to their sons, but there wasn't too much of a heart to heart. I think if they added more heart to heart moments like that with like Ichigo and his dad, Uryu and his dad, before the final battle starts, it would have made this entire thing more meaningful. That might just be me, but I don't know. Like I was just expecting more of a heart to heart with each of the dads and everything. And I thought it would just have been really nice to see right before the final battle happens. What is up y'all? So there was something I forgot to mention as I was editing this video. And it was another bad that I kind of didn't like with this arc, but at the same time, I did kind of like it cause it was a little bit different. So pretty much near the end of the final battle, they end up doing a 10 year time skip. And then a little bit afterwards, they go back to the present timeline and then again back into the 10 year time skip. So I thought it was kind of weird doing a time skip right before the final attack is launched. But at the same time, I did kind of like it because it was a little bit different. But also it was kind of just like, it, I, to me, it kind of felt like it just came out of nowhere. So even though I didn't like it too much, but I also did like it at the same time, I think it did kind of fit with like the theme of Yuha's power and everything. So it does kind of make sense on why we end up seeing a time skip near the end of the final battle. But at the same time, it's just like, okay, this was weird. Like why did they end up doing a time skip? So yeah, that was just one more thing that I forgot to mention that I didn't like, but again, at the same time, I also did like, you know, like I said, it was a little bit different, but at the same time, it kind of just felt like it came out of nowhere. But then again, at the same time, it kind of made sense with the theme of Yuha's power. So yeah, that was just one thing I forgot to mention. Now, I don't want this to be a negative discussion video talking about the thousand year blood war, because like I said in the beginning, it was a pretty damn good arc. It just had some flaws to it. And when I was rereading the manga, you know, I was taking notes for this video. And honestly, there were more goods than bads to the Thousand Year Blood War arc, so I'll talk about some of the goods that I liked about this arc. So the first good I want to talk about is actually the villains. The villains for this arc, in my opinion, is probably the greatest villains that we have ever seen in the entire Bleach series. Like, the villains for this arc, they were so damn powerful. Like, uh, they were had you had characters who were able to steal Bonkais. Yeah, stealing Bonkais we see some of the captains actually get their Bankai stolen. And because of this, they get messed up badly. And not only were they so powerful to take Bankais away, but they were also so powerful that they were able to take over Waco Mundo, take down Hollybell and take down Baragon as well. So these villains really meant business and they were really that powerful. Another thing that was also really cool about them was their powers. Their holy forms, some of those holy forms were just so amazing. I cannot wait to see how they look animated. They were just so beautiful to see. Another thing I really liked with this arc was the Bankais that we do end up getting to see. Now, I don't know about you, but for me personally, I was not expecting to see everyone who can use Bankai go Bankai, but the ones that we do get to see go Bankai, it went hard. The Bankais that we do get to see, they are just I have no words to express like just how amazing those like those Bankais were because honestly they were just so hype. It was amazing and I cannot wait to see that get animated, especially for certain characters because their Bankais, ooh, we haven't seen it throughout the series, but when we do get to see it, oh my god, chef's kiss to those Bankais. Another thing that I really liked was Ichigo's family backstory. But I think this could be both good and bad because I feel like they could have added a little bit more with his backstory, with his family backstory, you know, since it was like pretty much talking about um, Ichigo's dad and mom. So I think, you know, it could have been both good and bad. Like I liked it, but I think if they were to add a little bit more with his backstory, I would be perfectly fine with it. Even though we have seen Ichigo's like family backstory a little bit. It was a little bit in this arc. They do kind of do a little bit more with his family backstory. 
you know, talking about his dad and his mom, you know, before they met and everything. And so, yeah, I think that was pretty nice. But if they were to add a little bit more with that, I would be perfectly fine with that. Another thing I really, really loved about this arc was that they brought characters back from previous arcs. And honestly, oh, when they did that, I went crazy for it, especially for a certain good looking man. When they brought him back into this, ooh, I lost it because you knew that this was going to be a big battle that they needed to bring this person back in. They needed to bring this man back into the arc. Oh my God. I, I went crazy for it. I thought like I was not expecting that. And when it happened, it was oh my gosh it was so beautiful now i don't know if this would be considered a spoiler so if it is another spoiler warning another spoiler warning yeah so because like i said i don't know if this really counts as a spoiler but honestly we do get a little bit more with unahana and oh my gosh the things we get with unahana in this arc because i feel like in previous arcs she really didn't do too much but in this arc Oh my gosh, it, it was crazy. Unahana, she, she used to be my least favorite captain, but after with this arc, Unahana jumped straight up to being one of my favorite captains of the entire series because of this arc. So the last good thing I want to talk about this arc is that they do somewhat of a callback to Ichigo and Uryu's rivalry. And honestly, because of that, I think it was foreshadowing what's to come between Ichigo and Uryu, you know, because... You know, with Ichigo and Uryu, like later down the arc, it gets crazy. It gets interesting. I think this was really nice because, like I said, remember at the beginning of the series, Ichigo and Uryu did have a rivalry with each other, you know, because Ichigo was a Soul Reaper and Uryu was a Quincy and they're kind of like natural born enemies. So having that callback and talking about like, you know, how they became really good friends, you know, after they were rivals in the beginning, I just really like that. And especially, like I said, I felt like it foreshadowed for what's to come between Uchi, Ichigo and um, Uryu. Also, one more thing that I'm very excited for once it gets animated is Yoruichi. If you know, you know. But honestly, even if they don't make these changes, I would be okay because of the fact that Bleach is finally coming back. You know, I've seen some of the trailers and oh my gosh, this arc looks amazing with the cell that they went with. I cannot get enough of it. So yeah. Either way, I am very excited for the Thousand Year Blood War to finally get animated, especially since we've been waiting 10 years for this anime to come back. So I'm not too sure if I'm going to do reaction videos to Bleach once it comes out, like in a couple weeks as of recording this video. But if they do make some changes, I'll most likely do reaction videos to it. So if I do, definitely look out for those. So that's pretty much my thoughts and opinions on what I think needs to be changed for the anime. Let me know down below if you would agree with my changes or let me know down below on what you think needs to be changed for the anime. So I pretty much got nothing else to say. So I'm going to end the video here. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for my reaction videos and my other discussion videos. So if you're into that, subscribe to my channel, like the video, comment, you know the whole thing. So with all that being said, again, thank you all for watching. Until next time. See ya.